Good morning from the Rooster Observatory. As the market gets crowded with electronically assisted astrophotography devices or instruments, uh, I'm going to carry out a comparison of the specifications of Stellina, Vespera, Dwarf, and Sea Star, the new uh, ZWO Sea Star S50. I'm sticking to Specification comparison, uh, primarily hardware. I assume that software will be upgraded to include more and more features. Uh, I will clarify that I own uh, Stellina and Wolf 2, and I have ordered the Seastar S50, and I look forward to what each of them will allow me to do in imaging the heavens. First, price. Uh, yeah, there's a big differential between Stellina and Vespera on the one hand, and then the Sea Star and the Dwarf 2 on the other hand. Uh, when I bought the Stellina about two years ago, uh, I believed that it was worth every penny that I paid for it. Uh, Veonis no longer sells the Stellina, it shows as discontinued. Uh, Vespera is their new uh, flagship at uh, almost $2,500. Uh, weight appears to be proportional to price here. Uh, Stellina at 11 kilograms or 24 pounds was very nice to have, uh, much easier to carry than my Celestron 11 inch HHD on a CGX mount. Uh, Vespera is about half the weight and uh, Sea Star, uh, three kilograms, six point six pounds. Uh, dwarf two at only uh, just over a kilo, uh, two and a half pounds is extremely portable. Uh, dimensions there also size uh, shows that uh, Dwarf two is not much bigger than a dictionary. Uh, uh, for many viewers who have never seen or heard what a dictionary is, it's a book in which you used to look the meaning of words and how they are spelled. But uh, it is indeed, uh, Dwarf 2 is the smallest of them all. The mount, they are all uh, alt as mounts with uh, two qualifications. Stellina is the only one with a hardware field derotator. Uh, the sensor actually turns uh, to keep track of the movements uh, of the stars, and uh, that has proven very, very useful. Uh, Vespera does the field derotation by software, as does the Sea Star and the Dwarf. The Dwarf is the only one among them that can be mounted in an equatorial mount. Uh, I built a makeshift uh, equatorial mount, uh, pointed Dwarf 2 to the North Star, to Polaris, and it did an extremely good job. Uh, I don't know, however, if the bearings on the motor are intended to operate at an angle, at a 45 degree angle and carrying that weight, so I don't plan to, to use Dwarf too often in an equatorial mount mode. They all have autofocus with uh, some subtle differences. A dwarf 2 autofocuses as fast as a camera would autofocus. Uh, pointed to the moon, double click on it, and in a fraction of a second, it has perfect focus. Astrina takes a long time to autofocus, uh, up to a couple of minutes. They will have a go-to with a fairly decent uh, catalog. Stellina has the most extensive catalog of them all. Uh, Dwarf is limited. I don't know about Sea Star's catalog yet. And they all allow for uh, a go-to based on right ascension and declination. Last but not least, connectivity. Uh, none of them has an eyepiece and none of them has a display. Uh, they all uh, they're all controlled via either a tablet or a cell phone. Uh, Stellina and Vespera use Wi-Fi. Uh, Dwarf 2 uses Bluetooth and then connects to Wi-Fi. And Sea Star uh, claims both Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi. 
Optics. Uh, Stalina has the largest aperture of them all at 80 millimeters, uh, close to three inches. It has quite a bit of light gathering. I have been very, very pleased with Stalina's ability to find comets uh, at uh, magnitude uh, 11 and 12, sometimes 14, with enough uh, time in there. Uh, Vespera and Sea Star are uh, almost identical, uh, 50 millimeters aperture. Uh, focal length is slightly different. Uh, Dwarf 2 is the only one of the series with two lenses and two sensors. Uh, the main telephoto lens is 24 millimeters, uh, just under an inch, which gives it a 100 millimeter uh, focal length. Uh, Stalina at 400 millimeters. Uh, it does justice to the moon. Uh, of the of the three that I've tested, a dwarf two is the only one that actually showed me colors on the moon. I could see brownish and bluish. Uh, Stellina renders it all in uh, essentially shades of gray. And uh, I'm talking here about the raw imagery and not much uh, post-processing. The second lens on Dwarf 2 gives it a very, very wide field of view, 50 degrees uh, at f2.4 uh, and 48 millimeters. Uh, the field of view of Stellina uh, makes it uh, good for uh, most galaxies. And uh, beyond that, uh, they do allow for panoramic view or mosaic. And uh, the mosaic on Stellina using covalence is uh, extremely good. Uh, it allows the expansion of the field of view by a factor of four, uh, two in each dimension. Uh, at one degree and uh, 42 minutes, uh, it does not fit uh, Andromeda, but Andromeda will fit very happily when we go with the uh, covalence. Vespera has a slightly bigger field of view. Uh, Dwarf 2 has the biggest field of view native of all of them. Uh, Dwarf 2 is the only one that allowed me to fit the entirety of Mercurian's chain, the M86 series. Uh, and uh, it came out nice, uh, despite uh, the field rotation that uh, took place. Sterina claims an apochromatic doublet, C-star S50 apochromatic triplet, Vespera apochromatic quadruplet. The only thing I could find about Dwarf 2 is that the lens is in a periscope configuration, which allows it to maintain its uh, very, very small uh, form factor. The sensor technology, uh, Sony IMX178 for Stellina, uh, Vespera and C-Star use the same uh, IMX462 CMOS sensor and Dwarf 2 uses the IMX415 and the differences among them is uh, number of pixels. I'm very, very happy with Stellina's six megapixels, uh, 3000 by 2000 pixels effectively. Uh, it gives me a lot of latitude to work with. Uh, Vespera and C-Star are both two megapixel. And uh, Dwarf 2 has an eight megapixel sensor at uh, essentially 4K by 2K. Uh, in astro imaging with Dwarf 2, the default today is a two by two binning of pixels, which brings it down to effectively two megapixels. Uh, I don't know if future software upgrades or firmware upgrades will allow native resolution, but for now, even though the sensor is uh, uh, four megapixels, it, uh, in astro mode, it bins it two times two. Taking images of the moon in photo mode and video mode, I'm able to get the full 8 megapixel resolution, uh, which is nice to have uh, given the field of view of 3 degrees. Pixel sizes, uh, 2.4, 
a micron versus 2.9 and uh, 1.45 for the dwarf two. Uh, the Stellina sensor is the only one that goes to 14 bit pixel depth. Uh, the others are uh, up to 12 bit essentially. Uh, that's it for uh, specification comparison. Uh, I look forward to getting the C star. Uh, Stellina will uh, will maintain its place as a deep sky object astrophotography for me. Uh, the Sea Star and the Dwarf will have uh, two separate missions. Uh, dwarf 2 is the only one with the two cameras. It's the only one that allows me to do uh, daytime photography. Point it to the moon at the, during daytime, click on it, and we are in business. Uh, I don't expect any of the others to be able to image the moon during daytime. Uh, I also use it for uh, wildlife photography. Uh, and uh, it comes in very handy for cloud photography, which is what I do most of the time around here. Uh, that's all for this comparison. So long from the Roosterin Observatory.